Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Future Friday In today's episode we're going to take a look at how do we actually terraform Venus So before we understand about terraforming Venus first we have to understand why the heck I'm not talking about Mars but I'm talking about Venus Now to give you a very simple idea like very simple it's a long term solution what does that mean think of it this way if you take entire humanity's energy uh, the gross domestic product so basically you took entire humanity as like okay i'm going to give you 500 years uh, do what you will if you put that 500 years into mars you will still have mars but if you put that 500 years of time on venus you will have earth 2.0 with almost identical situation and it is a very long term solution even uh, when scientists are like trying to uh, you know optimistically predict what will happen if it terraformed uh, mars the answer always comes down to the same fact it will not hold the atmosphere it's as you can see in this picture you should get a clear idea how small mars really is venus is almost like earth and it is also inside goldilocks zone the reason why it's hot it's because of greenhouse effect now this is the reason why humanity even knows about greenhouse effect uh, because it did not mathematically make sense how the heck this can be hotter than mercury which is the first planet uh, in our solar system first as in from uh, first uh, then it is the closest to the sun how the heck that can be colder than this so this taught us very important thing and uh, it is a very uh, realistic glimpse of what could happen to earth if a runaway greenhouse effect happened now what about terraforming venus is very simple it's classical terraforming when i'm talking about classical things as in nature already does that this venus uh, format that we have it used to be uh, earlier earth basically old earth would look more or less like venus so there is a natural tendency of things to help out like co2 atmosphere for instance uh, earth had very very substantial atmosphere that was mostly co2 however over time life bacteria actually started uh, digesting co2 and emitting out o2 and hilariously enough they ended up dying because of oxygen uh, the atmosphere was polluted by oxygen from uh, the bacterial uh, points of view oxygen was deadly so you know things happen and not to mention it did took millions of year but from a planetary point of view it's nothing be mindful oxygen is not stable so if you ever find oxygen at rich atmosphere in any body uh, like any celestial body there is a very good chance it's actively being generated or there is life on it so this is is a very interesting part that it can be classically terraformed and it's closer to earth that means travel and trade between these two copies are much more uh, you know common easier and uh, communication lag as in light lag is also less and one thing you can't give mars no matter what you do no matter what kind of fancy magical technology we are talking about it's gravity so to understand gravity in itself is that this is a uh, 0.4 this is 0.9 this is one so here if you walk here you will feel a little bit light if you walk here you will feel like a superman here's the problem with that if you stay on mars as in long term or as in you were uh, you know born on mars and things of that nature you come back to earth you will die because your own body weight will be so high that your bones will not be able to handle it this sort of effect has been observed and properly cataloged when astronaut come uh, come back from 0g from iss so we know for a fact that uh, zero gravity is going to kill you we now even know a time frame and we know for a fact there is a correlation like a 1g to 0g so best estimate is like we can only live there for 4 to 5 years like of course you can live there indefinitely it's just that you can't come back to earth now how do we actually do it it sounds all fun and games like uh, you uh, ask elon musk is like yeah, yeah, yeah we can terraform mars how so how in venus terms it's super easy all we need is sun shade now sun shade and solar uh, solar sails or uh, light sail is more or less the same thing something that reflects light not absorbs it be mindful you don't want something black that is absorbing it you want something that reflects it like this this is mylar based and uh, to give you an idea how good we are with this sort of technology is like if you want to make one kilometer square kind of sail or uh, you know sun block it it can be made from 100 kgs of aluminum that's it and uh, so we can make the shade and uh, shade 
has to be made on moon we cannot do it on earth uh, simply because the unless we have orbital ring around the earth we cannot transport that kind of mass away from earth without roasting earth so for that point of view moon mining has to be done like how do we do it we put solar shade we where do we make that kind of solar shade like millions of kilometers uh, you know large and i'm not talking one large piece that's simply uh, not feasible multiple small ones so we have to figure out moon mining now you can check my detailed disc video here so now we have moon mining before the, like if before moon mining don't even talk about it don't even think about it it's like it has to have moon mining so we have small mirrors there and moon has boatload of aluminum so that's also good now it's gonna take a long while and under no circumstance think of it this way okay i uh, place the solar shade and it's gonna cool uh, the venus instantaneously it will take time upwards of 200 to through uh, 300 years now then the question becomes okay where are we gonna place the sun shade we're gonna place it at L1 point. Now be mindful, if you place something on L1, L1 is not stable in orbital direction, as in if L1 uh, from L, it will move towards L4, it will not come back. If, if it moves to L5, it will not come back. But if it moves towards, let's say L3, it will fall back. If it moves towards the planet, it will fall back. Like uh, it's gravitationally stable in two directions, but not in every direction. Like L5 and L4 are very stable. Now, if you place something on L1, the shadow it will cast. Now, of course, there will be a lag at first, you know when it's coming and it, uh, when eclipse is starting to happen it will take time now once that shadow is there it will move in sync there won't be any lag so it's basically you are creating an eclipse scenario to cool down the planet so and thankfully we humans are lucky that our star is very bright in infrared which is very easy to block and reflect from aluminum if it was bright in let's say gamma ray or x-ray yeah we did we don't know anything that can stop it or reflect it you know easily enough so that's how we do it. That's the inherent principle of it. Okay, let's say we did that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, giant solar shade. What's gonna happen after that? Now, uh, in 200 time, like do not under any uh, circumstance misunderstand that that's the optimistic one. Now, of course, the worst case scenario is still 300 years. It's basically from that time zone. So the reason is uh, why it's that uh, long is simply because uh, a planetary body is basically in vacuum. A planet is in a vacuum, like it's surrounded by vacuum. So how the heck it's gonna dump the heat away? So it can only dump the heat away in using infrared, basically radiation. Now you might be like, okay, it doesn't CO2, uh, you know, absorbs it, which which is the problem with Venus. Yes, but uh, no amount of insulation is 100% perfect. Even CO2 lets some infrared out. However, the sun is inputting so much and output is not balanced. That's why it's so, uh, you know, roasted. So if you remove the sun's input, the output is still there, but over time uh, enough, uh, you know, output has happened that it would have drained the system, drained the system as in the CO2 will become ocean. Now I'm like, okay, I remember from school that CO2 only goes from so uh, gas to solid. True and false. True, it happens on Earth. False because it's directly dependent on the uh, pressure basically. So as the Venus atmosphere starts to cool down, because at uh, Venus atmosphere has so much pressure, it will compress the CO2 in a such a way that it will become liquid. Now once the pressure starts to drop, then it will end up creating uh, what we call dry ice. So you will have a scenario where you will have a liquid ocean of CO2 and you will have dry ice uh, covering it on top. Now you might be like, okay, let's say we removed solar shade, wouldn't that uh, come back to surface yes and no it will come back over time and i'm talking millions of years and that is like without any human intervention but the problem is that once you removed enough uh, co2 it's not uh, venus is not like mercury it does not it's not very close to sun so it will take very long time and this time there is no co2 in the atmosphere like of course there will be a little bit undeniably so but there is not enough and co2 ice is very reflective so it will remain cold and be mindful the amount of energy you removed that's a very big amount of energy that you removed from uh, venus like passively undeniably so with the heating it up will take again that amount of time so we'll have oceans of CO2 and it will, uh, it already has oxygen and nitrogen rich environment. Now I'm going to be like, okay, uh, where the heck it has nitrogen? It only has 3% nitrogen in its atmosphere. That is true. But because of the Venus atmosphere's size, 3% of Venusian nitrogen is much more than what we have on Earth. So be mindful, like it already has nitrogen. We don't have to transmit uh, transmit or transport insane amount of nitrogen. We, it already got it. Heck, it might end up, uh, you know, too much. So we already have nitrogen there. It's just that uh, we have to figure out what to do with CO2 for long term. And I'm talking longer than few million years.
and uh, is, it will be more or less like earth at that point once it has cooled down now of course you can uh, let's say started to cool down you let's say you did not remove the sunblock or completely made it opaque over time venus uh, temperature will keep going down and down and down and down and sooner or later it will reach cryogenic temperature but if you don't want that it's like of course that will not happen it's not like a our sun is not giving out any x-ray or uh, gamma rays that will go through our shade but you know we can still open it up a little bit to you know make sure the uh, light is coming and warming it up so we can control we can control the temperature so it's 200 years now what we can do in that time like it's an unfeasible to sell someone like okay we're gonna start this project and they're like okay what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do moon mine they're like okay i have the mines in the moon and here's it you do with what you have to do after that it's like yeah we have to wait for 200 years that's really wasteful what we can do in that time is figure out power and transmission basically uh, power wise biggest problem with our current situation is on earth is that we don't know or have any proper source of power here we already have the luxury of solar power now I'm really like, how the heck we have solar power we already put giants uh, solar shade and I specified that it cannot absorb light it has to reflect it all we have to do is create it in a convex shape basically uh, why I'm saying convex concave shape and make it into a basically solar uh, dish and using that we can extract power how much power we are talking about well you shaded the entire planet so we are talking about upwards of 100 to 300 terawatts per hour you can check my more episode about solar thermal power here so it is a lot of power to give you a context that kind of power uh, what kind of power we are talking about here it's more or less uh, Earth's current power consumption with everything combined it's barely 20 terawatt so you're gonna be fine for a very long time all things considered because that shade is that huge and you don't have to make again you don't have to make one giant solar shell uh, I'm saying one solar power collector you can have multiple small one you may not even need the whole cell you just uh, on the periphery you can make enough of them and that will provide enough power because I told you like hundreds and hundreds of terawatt of power uh, at this point if humanity ended up with a reactor that gives us hundred terawatt of power we like we don't know what to do with it although we will start removing carbon dioxide from our atmosphere so we can solve the power issue that will be the like once the shade is there then we'll start converting that shade into power collector then on top of that the biggest problem if you want to create a space fairing civilization is that rockets are not efficient flat out rockets are not efficient now we're like what about a space elevator we cannot make space elevator on a planetoid simply because gravity is too strong you need magical material like carbon nanotube and not to mention even carbon nanotube is stretched to its maximum limit so it has no safety margin you like even, even a minor uh, dent or th uh, damage it, it will you know tear apart however we can create something that gives more throughput than space elevator its orbital ring now Isaac Arthur created a very amazing video on this topic and uh, either I will link it here or uh, down in the description below you can check it out for further detail but this can be built with today's technology it's just very expensive so but if you have moon mining and if you want to create a planet doing this right now it's very easy now you're like if it is doable why the heck we are not why the heck we should not do it on earth simply because politics on earth we have uh, if you the easiest place to build this would be around the equator now problem in uh, earth scenario is like if you did it around the equator the tethers uh, as in like the cable that is going down that is your you know basically cable on which you are going to go up and down that is barely 200 kilometers if it is 100 kilometer up you will of course not have a direct line you will have a diagonal line to act as a you know brace uh, in both directions so USA is there uh, USA is not close to equator so you might be like okay let's tilt the ring now problem is the ring on covers the USA but does not cover uh, other things so you know our politics will not allow this sort of mega structure to be built on earth however on Venus because we are starting out we can start the whole colony system uh, around this ring basically wherever the tether is landing so we can start colonizing from the equator this way we solve two problems first power issue is solved then space transport so these two things are solved in the time while it's cooling like uh, this is not something that you will do after Venus has been cooled this is you will do something before it's cool because once that cooling process is done, people would want to go there right now so you want to build this before that happens so they don't have to waste time using rockets then uh, to give water Venus lacks uh, basically water how do you give Venus water first simple thing we have to do is do hydrogen mining now hydrogen mining is very easy in the outer reaches now my personal favorite for hydrogen mining is basically titan saturn's moon why 
well it has hydrocarbon plus water now many of you know who are familiar with uh, industrial hydrogen production is that we simply make it out of petrol yes hydrogen is produced out of petrol uh, it's called steam reforming you can look it up how that works and the reason for that is like it's very simple from if you want to talk to about uh, electrolysis electrolysis takes a lot of elect uh, energy as in joules compared to the steam reforming steam reforming takes much less that's why we use steam reforming now steam reforming requires two component component number one hydrocarbon component number two water both are present uh, here and benefit of this is that both are present in very easy form like water is in ice we can handle ice we know how to handle ice and we just need a hose and just dump it in the lake so very easy now what do we do with hydrogen that we got of course we have to liquefy it liquefying it take, uh, you know requires a cold temperature this place is very cold it's as close to cryogenic as you're gonna get so we already have that cold temperature now be mindful solar energy is not gonna work any other thing other than nuclear technology nothing will work RTGs does not have have enough power to create enough of it so we need nuclear fusion to get things working if we figure out fi uh, f uh, fusion that's awesome if we don't we have to go back to fission but it is doable we know how to do what we call steam reforming and uh, it's nothing fancy and if you have liquid methane if you have boatload of ice and if you have a cold environment uh, you can do this process very efficiently. I'm talking like liters of liquid hydrogen for a few kilowatts of power. That's uh, very, very optimum. Now we have to build space elevator here. Now since thankfully it's very small, it has very low surface gravity. So elevator has to be made of normal things like Kevlar. Why elevator? Why not use maglev that you can use from moon? Simply because it has an atmosphere. So it is very good for landing there. Atmosphere will help you land, but to get off it, you can't rely on maglev because the friction too will be too high. But space elevator will work. So this is way you will do hydrogen mining. Now why hydrogen? Simply because one ton of hydrogen equals 18 liters, uh, 18 tons of water. So what could this sort of thing require? Like I'm talking about Future Friday and I'm talking about a very far out concept. So what would it actually take for humanity to do something like this? Physics says, okay, phys uh, this can be done, but physics has said hundreds of things. So, you know, many things are possible in physics, but it's about money, it's about time, it's about patience. So what will it actually take? Like I removed one thing uh, from my presentation is like, how do we gonna fix the day night cycle? It is doable with mirrors only. You don't need magical thing. And because I am not uh, settled on yet, how do we actually fix it? Like uh, actually as in like my preferred way. So that's why I haven't made it. There are hundreds of options, each one, you know, to each is their own. That's why look it up how we can fix it. So first thing we need is uh, the time frame is too high, but it's not too far apart. Like think of it this way. Uh, Great Wall of China took longer than that. Uh, USA's history so far, let's say tomorrow USA dies, still would have lived longer than the time period we are talking about. We still have uh, lived around 260 years or something like that. So that time frame is long to us but it's not truly really long like roman empire was classified as 900 year old uh, you know empire that's a very long uh, amount of time that means if they had started this uh, venus terraforming their citizen would have lived long enough to see the you know flourishment of that system so first thing and foremost for this sort of projects to happen we need longer lifespan now i'm like okay that's a pipe dream humans living longer we already live three times longer than our uh, pre-industrial counterpart. We have already achieved it. And in recent time, doctors have finally, st uh, you know, starting passing what we call aging. Now aging is no longer like aging. It's a disease. It's like, okay, this is breaking down. This is breaking down. This is breaking down. And we are trying to fix that. Now, of course, it's not like a magic cure is right there, right around the corner. You're going to get an injection and voila, you're going to live to 300 years. There is a uh, lot of process needs to be done, but we can easily expect to extend average life to 100 years in the next, uh, let's say 50 to 60 years. Like we are already at 90, like many people who are born today will live till 90. 100 is doable, like 150 is the hard part. And once we start to figure out that out, of course, once we reach 150, there will be more challenges, but it is solvable. Now the physics has uh, provided us the answer biology is also like okay we can be done but this this sort of things you have to figure it out how do you actually make human live longer so once we start living in centuries our perspective will change because then uh, let's say venus project would be like okay i'll do it my uh, you know grandson will see it like that's uh, something close enough that is something close enough that you can actually say you know what i should invest in this because you know my family will live to see it not like you know my grand 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 my family will see it so this will truly open humanity's eye to long-term projects. 
then moon mining is absolute like the, there is no no future of humanity unless we figure out moon mining now reality of mars this is why i actually hate elon musk is like uh, when he showed his presentation he literally showed this here's mars and mars starts spinning of course it has day and night cycles so awesome and it magically becomes like earth it's like it has now ocean it has now atmosphere and people are living there i'm like what let's say you give it ocean let's say you give it atmosphere it will not hold it for more than few hundred years and i'm talking few hundred years in like three four hundred years so like how do you magically expect it to hold atmosphere it does not have enough gravity and when he showed this diagram i had a um, my, one of my friend who is a very big gamer he's like what is this this is literally looks like copy pasted from a game like you know city builder games like that's not how e easy it is like you just go there and build glass domes radiation will kill you like you can check my episode here where you i figured out you can't use windows on mars or moon Yes, you have to use mirrors like check that episode for full detail so basically he is overselling it that's why i hate this uh, him it's like he's selling the idea that we go to mars and tomorrow our, all our issues are solved we have earth 2.0 no it's not earth 2.0 it does not have atmosphere it does not have radiation shielding it does not have gravity so we can't come back so it's like and there is no way to power things on mars like how the heck are you gonna power it outside of flat out super gigantic solar systems uh, as in like solar power dish or uh, giant nuclear reactors there is no way to power anything on you know mars how the heck are you gonna do that so it's like he just shows this and like even my friends like dude that's i think i do not know which game is like age of empire or something like that like you know it literally like that's that's not how easy it is like so once people actually go there of course i'm talking about manned mission once where people actually go there and come back then the excitement around mars will come down it's like okay we did that it's a good training ground awesome i will uh, i'm totally on board of it but if somebody says mars will become earth 2.0 yeah that's not happening physics is not on your side so this was my presentation on why we need to terraform Venus and uh, I hope you liked it, learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't worry about it, you can dislike it. And I would urge you to leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of Future Friday. And as always, please subscribe, share it amongst your friends and press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.